In this video, we'll introduce the shooting and matching method for solving a linear second order boundary value problem. Consider the second order linear ODE defined here with constant coefficients a1 and a0, where the boundary conditions are known values of the dependent variable y at a and b in the domain. To solve this as an initial value problem, we would need to know y at a and y prime at a. First, we'll define the state variables and write the state space form. Here, we'll call the state variables u. So u1 is y and u2 is y prime. And then our derivatives of the state variables are u1 prime is of course u2, and u2 prime is obtained by solving the defining equation for y double prime. Next, to implement the shooting and matching method, we solve this system as an initial value problem using initial conditions u1 equals ya at a, and u2 at a is y prime at a. Notice that this second initial condition is actually just a guess. Then we use one of the initial value problem solver methods that we discussed from chapter 7 to find the values of y at every place in the domain, including at the right-hand boundary of the domain, where u1 at b should be equal to y at b according to the definition of our boundary value problem. So we know y at a and y at b, but we solve the problem using the known value of y at a and a guess for y at a prime. Now we've probably guessed wrong, so the solution is unlikely to exactly match our known condition y at b. So then we solve the system as an initial value problem again using initial conditions, but we use a different guess for y prime at a than we used the first time. Maybe our second guess looks something like this. Again, we probably guessed wrong. So we don't expect that y at b will exactly match the required boundary condition. But since the defining equation is linear, the value of y at the point x equals b is actually a linear function of our initial guess for y prime at a. So to find the solution, we can linearly interpolate or extrapolate to find the correct initial guess for y prime at a. And then we solve a third time using our interpolated guess. So on our third guess, we should be able to exactly match the solution of y at b. However, because we used an initial value problem solver to estimate the solution y at x over all points in the domain, we know that each of our first two initial guesses actually has some global error at y at b, and in fact our third guess will also have some global error of y at b. Nonetheless, within the error tolerance of our initial value problem solver, we should be able to make a guess for the initial slope that matches the solution of y at b. Consider this example problem from chapter 8 of the methods text. This is a second order linear ODE that's defined as a boundary value problem. We know the value of the dependent variable at 0 and at 5. So first we write this in the state space form. Here, since u is our dependent variable, we'll use x as the state variable. x1 will be equal to u, and x2 will be equal to u dot. Of course, the derivative of x1 is x2, and the derivative of x2 is found by solving the defining equation for u double dot. First, we'll solve this as an initial value problem using two boundary conditions at the left side of the domain. The first boundary condition is known, and the second boundary condition is a guess. We'll guess that the initial slope of u is equal to zero. And then we'll solve it again using the known boundary condition for x1 and a different initial guess for x2, where we assume the initial slope is minus 10. Now we solve the initial value problem using these two sets of initial conditions using one of the initial value problem solvers. We'll use the Runge-Kutta-4 method implemented in MATLAB. The solution using our first guess is shown in blue in this plot on the right. The initial value of u is 1, and the initial value of the slope we set equal to 0. This overshoots our boundary condition at the right-hand end of the domain. u at 5 is supposed to be equal to 2.4. And in fact, we find that u at 5 is equal to some value between 4 and 5. So we make a second guess with the initial slope set equal to minus 10, and we solve this using the RK4 method. Now we find the value at the right-hand end of the domain is u equals some 
number a little bit between 1 and 2. So we've underestimated this initial slope by setting it to minus 10 and overestimated this initial slope by setting it to 0. If we plot our guess for the unknown initial condition on the x-axis and the obtained value of u at 5 on the y-axis and draw a line connecting them, then to find the initial condition we need to select u at 5 equals 2.4 and then we find what our initial slope should be from the x-axis. Graphically we can see that it should be about minus 6.8 or so. Using the correct guess for the second initial condition and solving the initial value problem we can exactly obtain the correct boundary condition of u5 equals 2.4 on the third guess. This linear interpolation method works exactly in this case because we were solving a linear ODE. The solution at all points in the domain, including at the right-hand boundary of the domain, is a linear function of our initial guess for the slope at the left-hand end of the domain. So we can linearly interpolate to find what that slope should be from any two initial guesses. Now, if our boundary value problem is nonlinear, then when we guess a value for the missing initial condition at the left-hand end of the domain, we cannot linearly interpolate to find the exact value. But we can still follow the same method. We guess a value for the missing initial condition at the left end of the domain, solve as an initial value problem and plot the solution, and then we compare to the boundary condition at the other end of the domain. Then we guess a new value for the missing initial condition and solve again, attempting to bracket the boundary condition at the other end of the domain. Now we can iterate using the bisection method or some other root finding method to change the guess for our initial condition at the left side end of the domain and attempting to match the solution at the right hand end of the domain. This shooting and matching method works well for second order ODEs and it gives us an analytical solution for the missing initial condition when our ODE is linear. This also works for systems of first order ODEs when we have two independent variables. However, for higher order ODEs or for systems of multiple equations, we may have multiple initial conditions that we have to guess, and that makes using the shooting and matching method more complicated. Consider a system that when written in the state space form results in equations for four state variables, where two of the state variables are known at the left-hand end of the domain, and two of the state variables are known at the right-hand end of the domain. To solve this as an initial value problem, we have to guess two initial conditions at A to replace the two initial conditions that we know at B. Convergence to finding the correct values of those initial conditions will require solving a system of equations. That system of equations may be linear if our boundary value problem is linear, or it may be nonlinear if our boundary value problem is nonlinear. We might choose instead to use the finite difference method, which will be introduced in the next video.